Welcome. This lecture talks about what you actually do when you go about doing your business planning. What is this exercise about? Is this something that you go online and use, uh, uh, use some template or you buy a software package and you go and develop that software, use that software package to develop it? Is it something you hire a third party to develop for you, your business plan, so you can have it? No. The answer is you want to learn about your opportunity from people that might have input in a way that will really help you succeed and help your business succeed. That's what you're trying to do. And you do that by networking, talking to experts, talking to people that have done this before, people in your industry, uh, future suppliers, uh, future employees, people that you might want to partner with, people that might invest in you, your banker, your accountants, your attorneys, those kinds of people and try out what you're doing. Give them something to react to. I'm thinking of developing a product which does this. They react to it and they may say it doesn't work for me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Whatever. You learn from all of those interchanges. You don't necessarily take their advice and go home. You make your product and your idea and your possible business plan better. It's about using people that know what they're doing in the real world to help you make your real world business better. So let's talk about that in just a little bit more detail. What is it that you're actually doing? You want to draw as much as you can from outside experts, future customers, future suppliers, future service providers like accountants and tax support, um, legal support, those things, not only because they give you good advice and they can help you, but also because it starts to embed you into an ecosystem within your community and within the business environment. So people know about you. They know what they, what you're doing. It's a type of marketing in a lot of ways. And if you're, if they're giving you good advice and you're using that good advice, they feel a bit invested in your company and they want to help you. It is amazing in business how much other people want to help you. Often, even competitors want to help somebody or potential, you know, down the line competitors want to help you because they want to share what they've learned. They don't get that many opportunities. If you're trying to open a new kind of restaurant, um, you may go to someone who has had experience with restaurants. They don't necessarily perceive a newcomer as a threat. There's lots of restaurants out there. They actually want to help you at least until you start to threaten them. It's amazing how nice and supportive people are in the environment when you go to them and ask for advice, counsel, support, expertise, um, feedback. They like that. That's what you want to draw on. Um, it also helps you as you embed in the community, develop potentially an advisory board. It doesn't have to be a formal group. The people that you can go to regularly you might join some local business clubs like the Chamber of Commerce or the Rotary and or just uh, just people that you know from church or from the community and start to go to them regularly as your business develops. Offer them your successes and your failures. They'll often help you with feedback or at least it, when you articulate it sometimes that helps you uh, think about how you're going to develop your plan further. This is on all aspects. This is on your business, your product design, your value proposition, which we'll talk a lot more about. It's on your marketing, who your markets are, who might buy it. You might say, I'm trying to sell this to, uh, to women. And they'll say, you know, which, what kind of women, what age group? They'll ask you questions like that because that's, they know how you do business. And the way they ask your questions, you realize this is how you need to be thinking about your business as well. You might want to draw on people that are, that have been executives or people that have been, there are in some communities have a council that helps. It's actually set up within the community to help new business owners become successful and become better at what they do. You also want to talk to investors like angels or venture capitalists, show them a preliminary draft of your plan, let them react to it. Uh, don't waste their time. Don't go to them with crap. If you go there, make sure that you don't have spelling errors or grammar errors or whatever, because essentially with, when you so, show somebody something that's kind of half baked like that, they show that you, you haven't, it shows that you have not put enough energy and effort into it. 
in a lot of ways, quite honestly, it shows disrespect. You go to an attorney and you ask for help, you give them a business plan that has some misspelling or format errors or grammar errors, and they don't feel like you're respecting their time, right? And if you want to build that relationship, it's generally built on you showing respect to them for their success. And in return for that, they share with you some of the wisdom that they've acquired. That's generally how you deal with people. You want to show them people that have been successful, particularly in ways that you would like to be successful yourself. They will um, share with you, but you in return provide them respect and you, you show them that you are really uh, uh, appreciative of their help to you. That's what they get out of it. They get the sense that they are able to help somebody and that their success means something to somebody. And you in return get get an opportunity to take advantage of some or much of their wisdom, which you get the better end of that deal, believe me. Um, you also can learn to recognize what you don't do. And oftentimes those advisors will help you say, you know, you need to get a salesperson on board or you need to get an accountant. If you go to somebody and you're talking about your business and they're asking you questions about your balance sheet and your uh, your receivables and what your terms of payment are and all this stuff and you're on, you're fumbling over them that doesn't mean your business won't work that person is essentially telling you you need a finance person to help you you need an accountant it's on your team that understands your business and can help you frame your business in ways that you can communicate with that part of the business community or on the marketing side or the advertising side that sort of thing if people start asking you questions about how much space you want to have or what sort of how often you want to publish something and you're sort of fumbling over those they might be signaling to you or they might even tell you you know you need somebody that has advertising experience advertising buying experience on on your team right so those are the sorts of uh of feedback that you tend to get as you use your advisory network one studies that have been done on entrepreneurs find that by and large the most success, besides their own personal characteristics in the nation of the opportunity, in terms of process, it's people that have good expansive networks of advisors that have been successful in the various areas they're trying to understand and they make use of that network. That's really something that tells whether or not one is able to succeed. It's not something you go alone at. You go with a team, a team of advisors and experts and that sort of thing. It can help point you in the right direction. That's how you learn fast from your social learning as well as your own experience. You try things and you learn not only from the experience, but from other people telling you what you should have learned from that experience as well. The last important point, and this relates to what I was saying before about the financials, to do business means you need money, which means you need access to capital, which means you want to make capital. So you have to translate your idea about a neat product and a happy customer and somebody manufacturing something that's slick and neat and customers being happy and the workers working hard. And you have to translate all of that into dollars and cents, into money. The financial elements of your business plan are not simply in the financial section of your plan. It is throughout. You talk about your price, your, your customers, their willingness to pay, the value proposition, what they're getting out of it. You talk operations, you talk about the cost of, uh, of producing your product or your service, you talk about how many there will be, what sort of overheads are associated with that. It's all integrated throughout. So when you get to the financials, everything makes complete sense. It's already clear because of what was in the rest of your business plan. Likewise, if you start with the business plan and you want to understand a little bit better about the marketing or the advertising strategy, you go to the advertising section and it talks about you're going to do this kind of a buy in a newspaper and this kind of a buy on at a local radio station. And those numbers match to what's in the financials. So it's all connected together. And this is why this is a, a, such a challenging task and why you need to have expertise from all different areas to survive. We're gonna move into the next section. We're gonna talk about <clears throat> how, what's actually in the business plan. But before we do that, there are opportunities to learn from others. And here's an example. There are a hundred of business plans at this website that I list here. In this particular area, you want to learn from other people. You want to figure out how they did a restaurant plan or how they did an app or how they did a service plan or anything like that. You want to understand how other people have done it. It's bad to copy and it's certainly 
um, cheating to plagiarize, but to learn from what others have done is just smart, right? So you go and you look at other plans, how they framed it, how they did their value proposition. You want to be different. You want to be unique, but you also want to learn what other people did so that you could take the best and then take it to another level and become even better as you go forward. So as I said, we'll begin the next, uh, next lecture with an overview of what's in the business plan and then talk about each section individually. Um, so we'll see you when we talk about the contents of the business plan. See you there.